am talking with you about environmental science for 2021. So environmental science is a high school credit. It may be your student's first high school credit, or it may be something they're taking alongside a math credit, but it is something that is going on their high school transcript. Um, in this class, students take a deep look at the human impact on the earth, and they really consider how the surfaces, the surface processes on the earth and human activity interact with each other for better, or for worse. Um, it's not about students memorizing facts. This isn't a class where students will be taking tests and quizzes, but it's a class where they'll be applying those science skill sets and really demonstrating critical thinking about these processes and even making some predictions or some future considerations about these processes after they've understood the systems and data that we have. Some possible projects that we have, and I say possible because given our situation with remote learning and moving into hybrid and then in building, depending on when those things happen or other things that come up, we may be adjusting these. But as of right now, our plans are to consider uh, con continue with the environmental topics that we're working on right now. And then after conference time, moving into the five spheres, so the biosphere, the hydrosphere, geosphere, atmosphere, and cryosphere, so that students really understand how those different spheres work together to form our planet. And then we'll move into science fiction and the environment and really look at students' own environment where they live or places they're very familiar with and what's really going on there so that they can unpack the layers of complexity in really important systems. In January, we will look to start a unit on urban gardens so we can understand how food systems, um, food waste, global food insecurity can happen and, and address that through making our own urban gardens and considering what that would look like. Then in February, we will move into natural disasters and preparedness. So those are some things that we have planned as of the moment. The standards you'll see in this class include the NGSS, where we'll have our science content, our science and engineering practices, those things. We also work with the ISTE standards on technology. So when students are using or using technology or producing content, what they're doing there. We also use the Common Core State Standards for writing and reading in science and technical subjects. Grading in this class is standards-based. So if students are meeting standard, they consistently are at the level of the high school or science standard in their work, that is a three. If they are consistently, again, consistently is the important word here, exceeding that standard in all of their work, then they'll receive a four. And then if they are close to meeting standard, if they're not quite there yet, they'll get a two. If they need extensive support, that's going to be a one. So really the key here is what they're demonstrating consistently. And I am someone who grades everything, meaning that while we do official grades in rubrics on their end product, their projects, I always tell students that everything you've done is part of your grade, because if I'm looking through your work and it's missing something, I will go back and look at all of the other work you turned in throughout the project and see if I can find evidence in that. So it's really important for students to always be doing their best throughout. Some other notes are that it's rubric based. We do have rubrics for those standards that's common throughout iTech. We do allow multiple attempts. That said, we do have some parameters on that, how long students can attempt. Um, if students just need to polish a project, they have up to two weeks after the due date, if they turn it in time to polish that up and get that looking great. If a month or two has gone by and they decide they want to work on a standard, then we will come up with an alternative plan for them to choose another way to demonstrate something that's more relevant and timely that way. Um, and then projects is what we're going to do in this class. Like I said, we don't do quizzes or tests in environmental science. This is purely a project class. The keys are going to be consistency when it comes to demonstrating what they know and growing their standards and throughout that communication. Like I said, I look at everything they turn in when I'm looking at their work as a portfolio. 
So if they are able to share with me their thinking as it develops, as it grows, that will only help them. And the final piece is self-assessment. We really like to work from the beginning, getting students to start to look at the standards themselves, look at their work and use the standards to inform their work so that they are self-assessing where they're at and where they need to go. The two main systems we use are common throughout most classes. So Canvas is where I will put the lessons, modules, any assignments that they have, links, anything they need in there. And currently that's where all the Zoom links are as well. Jump Rope is where I will put the grades. So if you're looking for grades, you always want to go into Jump Rope. Our first project, students are exploring environmental causes. So what's something in the environment that they care about? Either a lot or enough to research and get interested about and find out where things are. So we've been looking at TED Talks about the environment and as a presentation style so that students can persuade others to care about a topic of their choice. So their first graded assignment is going to be an annotated bibliography where they've done some research on their topic and that is due September 23rd. So you'll start seeing scores for that probably the end of next week or the week after at the absolute latest. And then students will be signing up for a TED Talk performance time in October. So they'll sign up ahead of time so they'll know what date they're going to give the TED Talk. And students are able to either give the TED Talk live or record and then play the recording. Either one will work. And some keys for success, especially because for some students, this is their first high school course. The first one is they need, be, need to be ready to learn today's material today. So really doing their best to stay on top of things. And at iTech with eight classes, that is not a small order. So because of that, I really encourage students to submit completed assignments on time. Um, as part of our iTech policies in the handbook, when students turn things in on time, then we give them even more time to polish them if they need that. Or then they can get that feedback that they want to improve things. When students are trying to turn things in late and we've already moved on as a class, it makes it difficult when they try to go back and polish some things up. And so we really want students to turn in their work on time. And then the third thing that I tell students is to email when they struggle, the earlier the better. If they email and let me know, I can help them. It's a lot more difficult, like I said, when time goes by and we try to go back and work on things because we don't have those things in mind. We've already got a new plate ahead of us. So it's really important that they email ahead of time to let me know and, and so we can talk over supports that we can put in place. To contact me, I send, as you've noticed, a mostly weekly newsletter in which I will share um, what we did that week, a little bit about that. If you want to have some talking points or things you can ask about where students should be as far as getting their work done. And then share a little bit what's coming in the week ahead so that you have that in mind. And it's also just a way where you can hit reply and send me a quick note or ask a question or anything like that. It's kind of my weekly reach out to, to families. I, we also have office hours, myself and Mr. Rogers, who is one of the high school math teachers, we've partnered up for our office hours and they are Tuesday before and after school, Wednesday before school and Thursday after school so that students and families can drop in and get support. Um, those links are on the linked on the homepage for Canvas. Um, as of right now, they are drop in so students can come to any one of those. We may have to change them in the future as we move into hybrid or as we get some more information about learning from home. But right now, that's what we are trying. And then my email, aaron.lark at vansd.org, is the best way to get a hold of me. I prefer email because then I can, you know, connect parents and keep students informed or connect other teachers and we can send files and we can just work really well on email. And it helps me make sure that I'm responding to students and tracking all of the communication that goes on. So that is all for a walkthrough with environmental science. Feel free to email me any questions and I hope we get to see you all really soon.